Hey all, this is part two, and we're going to talk about some if statement examples. So first is an if statement with undefined, and as we saw previously, if we declare a variable but don't assign it to anything, then that variable is going to have an undefined uh, value, or its value is going to be undefined. On line three, we're saying if declared triple equals undefined, then we're going to console.log declared is undefined. So if we run this, declared is undefined, so we'll run that that way. Let's go ahead and assign declared to be some value, some value. And if we run this, declared is no longer undefined, so we're not going to have our console output. Uh, one thing that we should take note of is that whole truthy falsy thing. So undefined is actually a falsy value. So if we say if declared, console.log declared is undefined, the problem here is that we haven't set up our if statement correctly. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to check to see if declared is a truthy or a falsy value. And essentially the way that you want to think about this, and you can check in the Boolean's uh, operation methods portion of the course for a little bit more detail on this, but the idea is that if something is not falsy, it is truthy. And there's like six falsy values, one of them is undefined. So if we run this, we're not going to get anything out. And the reason is, is because this falsy value essentially evaluates the false. And the way that we can get around this is we could assign declared to be something that is literally anything that's not one of those falsy values and in this case it's going to be truthy so the function so the console.log statement on line 4 does run now if we want to talk about a couple other falsy values uh, 0 is a falsy value uh, of course false is a falsy value I think an empty string is a falsy value but I'm not 100% sure it is so if we want to look at what this was originally, declared, we started as undefined, and this would be the situation where we want to ensure that a variable or a value, well, a variable anyway, or a parameter is undefined, and if it is, do something. So that's how we would do that. Now let's talk about an if statement with some numbers. So for this one, we have a total of apples and a total of oranges, and our if statement would be something like, if the number of apples is less than the number of oranges. Then we will console.log there are fewer apples than oranges. And not there are less apples than oranges. That's actually not the correct grammatical way to say that. You never say there are less if it refers to a uh, actual number. Less refers to like a degree of, um, uh, not magnitude. There's a way to say this that you can if you're smarter than me, or at least able to call up grammatical stuff quicker. But it basically has to do with like, if it's like a degree of expression, so it'd be like less hot, but if there are a number of something, it needs to be fewer. So there you go. If we change the number of apples to a number that is not fewer than the number of oranges, then we're not going to have anything outputted. Again, this undefined, if you're curious what's going on here, that's a, essentially the last value that is returned from the last operation that is performed gets you know green arrowed like this. It's basically like, okay, this is the final output of the program that you just run. Um, and that's not to be confused with a situation where we have a console.log output, which is like this. There's the console.log output in the nice white text, and the green output determines, or it doesn't really, it's not really something we want to concern ourselves with. So there's with numbers. Uh, let's talk about a string, and for this one, we've got a password, password123, which is an awful password, but that's okay. And this one is going to be a combination. So this is going to be if the length of the password, if length of password is less than 15, and greater than 4. So that's going to be the pseudocode that describes the if statement on line 4. So we're going to check to see if the password length is less than 15 and the password length is greater than 4. And if it is, we're going to console the log password is of appropriate length. So if we were to make our password uh, shorter than 4, or equal to 4 for that matter, or way too long, we're not going to see anything. So there you go. Let's talk about an if statement with an array. So we've got a list of agents and then an agent in question. And we mentioned this when we were talking about index of, and this if statement is a very, very decent way to quickly use the functionality of index of. So index of is going to tell us when, uh, where the index of something that is found within an array is, and it's gonna tell us that the index is negative one in the event that the, um, what we're looking for is not present in the list or the uh, array that we're searching in. So we'll say that, if the index of the agent is greater than negative one. And the reason we can say that is because if it's zero 
or above, we know that the index is a valid index and that the what we're searching for has actually been found. If it's negative one, then that means that this would be false and it's not. Now this console.log statement, we're actually building a string using the variable, which, you know, is a nice little thing to do. So it's been found in the agent list, well done. And now let's talk about an if statement with an object. So we've got an object that's gonna be the report totals for A team, B team, and C team. And then we're gonna say if the report totals at B team. So we'll say if B team's report total is total, total is greater than five. Um, we're gonna console the log B team has surpassed goal with report totals at B team. And if we extend this out, you'll see it's a little bit uh, plus report totals at B team. So again, we're interpolating into a result string a value from an object, and we're doing that based on a condition set up checking a value inside of the object compared to some threshold. In this case, the threshold is five. Um, Oh, one thing that I uh, wanted to show you guys is that I'm always doing things with the side-by-side -side layout, and that's because I like it, but you can do stacked, which is where you have the console at the bottom and the code on top. Uh, some people have said that this is a lot easier to work with, so just keep in mind that that is something you can do. Nothing's really going to change about the way that the code runs, but it does change uh, possibly. Um, some people have issues with, let's go back to side-by-side. Uh, some people have issues with this, where it puts things onto separate lines and it can get a little bit confusing. So if that's something that you're having a problem with, please feel free to make your uh, output stacked. Um, so if we run this, we'll see that the B team has surpassed goal with seven reports. Cool. And that's pretty much it. That's all for now. In the next lessons, uh, sorry, in the next parts of this lesson, we're gonna be doing uh, coding challenges. And so when we get to that, that'll be, you know, a barrel of laughs as it were. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.